Hey, 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 it's Pastor Mike. Okay, it's not. It's Amber. But if it's been a while since you've listened to Pastor Mike on the Time of Grace podcast, it's time to check in. Pastor Mike is relevant and real and has more energy than anyone I know. So check out Time of Grace with Pastor Mike Novotny wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on episode four of our Office Max series. And this episode is for those of you who, like me, are planners. Hey guys, it's Amber, wife, mother, warrior, type A child of God. Here at Little Things, we examine everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for joining me. I don't know how your plans are going. Here we are into a new year. Those of us who are planners love to get our planner full, our calendar all spread out with all the things we want to accomplish so we can mark them off, tick them off one after another. And so are you on plan A still? Or are you on plan C or F or K by now? I want to contemplate two passages right off the bat. They're both from the book of Proverbs, pretty close together. One's Proverbs 18.9, one is Proverbs 19.21. Proverbs 18.9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. And Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. I wish I remembered this, because way too often... All I see is my plan, and I see my list of things that I want to get done. And when it's not working out, I'm more prone to be praying, Lord, what's going on? I have this list. I want to get things done. Why isn't it working? Instead of saying, Lord, are my plans your plans? Is this what you wanted me to be doing right now? Or did you have something else in mind? We are given a gift in Acts chapter 16. The Apostle Paul was on a missionary journey that really wasn't going according to plan. See, we're told that Paul and his companions were kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they went on to Troas, and finally, in a vision... Paul saw a man from Macedonia asking for help. Now, the note on my study Bible says, we don't know exactly how God led them. We don't know if he used visions in the other two ways, the, when the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Jesus kept them from entering. We don't, we don't know if it was circumstances or if it was just good sense that God gave them. But when we read this, there's a question that we should probably be asking ourselves. What is the Spirit of God keeping you from doing? See, I'm not sure I've ever asked myself that before. I know that I like when plans go according to my plans. <laughs> when things work out the way I think they should work out, that, that's a good thing for me. But I don't stop to think maybe God is stopping me from accomplishing what I think I need to accomplish. See, God hears all of our prayers. But he sees the big picture. So he sees what's happening inside my heart. And he knows if my plans succeed, how that will affect my marriage how it will affect my children, how it will affect my heart, if I will continue to be dependent on him or if I suddenly become self-sufficient because now all of a sudden my plans are succeeding. I don't need God anymore. He sees how I am under pressure. And maybe this plan succeeding wouldn't be good for me. And then because he loves me, But because he also loves my husband and my children 
and all the people who we interact with, sometimes he puts roadblocks up. And he doesn't permit me to go down the path that I think is best because it's for the greater good. I've used this quote from Dwight Eisenhower many times. I'm sure you've heard me say it if you've listened to little things for any amount of time. Because it had such a profound impact on me and the way that I live my life. Eisenhower said, In preparing for battle, I've always found that plans are useless. But planning is indispensable. When you're in the heat of the battle, you really can't know exactly how things are going to turn out. And things happen all the time that you didn't expect. But you've done enough scenarios and you've thought through things enough that you're able to go on the fly based on the preparation that you've had. So where does this leave us? Those of us who are planners, maybe the first place we should start is Proverbs 16.3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Make plans. Put it in writing. Do what you think you should. But after you've made the plans... And after you've filled your calendar for the year, and after you've made your list, give your list to God. Lord, are these your plans for my life? Does this plan serve you well? What on this plan is not good for me, or wouldn't be good for my family, or wouldn't glorify you? Are there things that I need to add on this plan that I haven't even thought about? Lord, are there things that I should be doing instead of what I have on this plan? Is this plan the plan or or not? Do you want me to get started on this plan or should I scrap it? Should we just go with your plan? I think when we dedicate our plans to God and when we commit them to God and say, here's my plan, but I'm not running the show. You, you God, you're running the show. Then we're much more likely to be okay when our plans aren't going according to our plan. And I really, really want you to notice Paul. Because he started for Asia. He had his heart set on Asia. And when that was a no, he kept going. He, he went to Mysia. And that was also a no. So they kept going. But please note what they didn't do. (laughs) They didn't decide they weren't meant for mission work. They didn't throw a temper tantrum and say, well, God, if you won't let me go where I want to go, then I'm not going to go anywhere. They kept going while no doubt asking for guidance. Okay, God, if this isn't where we're supposed to go in, we'll try this place. Oh, not this one either? Okay, we'll, we'll head over to Troas. And there God said, well, you know, the real plan is this. I needed to hear that. Because as a planner, I'm not always so gracious when my plans aren't working out. And I'm not always so compelled to say, okay, well, <clears throat> this isn't working out. So Lord, just put me where you want me. Maybe in all of this, one of the things that we can take away is maybe we need to change our prayers. This year, I had the experience of going through a situation with a child who was trying to decide the next step for their future. And if it's been a while since you've made this decision or since you've um, walked through it with a child or a grandchild, it's a fairly complicated and terrifying experience to be looking at options. Do you go to this college? Do you do this program? Do you go here? How how is this supposed to work? Do you have enough money for this? Is this going to work out? Is this going to happen? So I was walking through this experience, and we thought we knew where we were going. We thought we knew the plan. And we were going through the hoops, and it all seemed to be working out perfectly until it wasn't. 
until there was just this stop. And during this time, I started praying, okay, God, you know this child. You know the traits and the characteristics and the abilities that you have given them. So we need you. We need you to show you, show us where you want them to go. But I didn't stop there. I was like, you know, God, I, this is another thing that's on my heart. I really want them to be in a Christian environment because I want them to be somewhere and in a situation that leads them to a closer walk with you. Not in a situation that could potentially lead them away from you or that may lead to worldly power in a worldly and prestigious job, but at the expense of the relationship with you. And out of the blue, something came along that we had never even considered. And I knew it was God. But if plan A had worked, I would have never started praying the way I was praying. Because pray, plan A seemed to me what was best. So I, I thought, you know, as long as this works, then this is God's plan. And this will all work out. But when plan A went away, I had to change my prayers. And, you know, it really made me start thinking about the prayers that I pray for myself and even for us as a family. How long has it been since you asked God how you could best serve him? Lord, are we doing what you want us to do? Are, you, are we where you want us to be? And now this gets scary because then you start asking it with your work. Is this job using my talents and abilities in a way that glorifies you, God? Is there somewhere else that I could be working that would better glorify you or that would use my talents in a way to further your kingdom? Are there people in a different job that need to hear your word? And then start asking it about your church and your community. And it's scary because we find security in what we know and in being comfortable. But what if we offered our bodies as a living sacrifice to God and said, I'm here. You know, I, I, I'm okay if you want to use me some way that's not my plan. I'm here. I'm your servant, so just use me. <laughs> Do we need to know the, friend, the plan? And that might be the next question we need to ask. Do we even need to know the plan? A dear friend of mine had cancer. She's in remission now. For, but, but for a season, I was able to walk with her through this whole cancer business. And, and what she learned early on is that her oncologist would tell her, you're getting ahead of yourself. When it comes to cancer, we just are going to deal with each thing as it comes up. So first, we're going to deal with surgery. And we're not going to talk about chemo until you get through the surgery. Because first you have to get through the surgery and you have to heal from the surgery. And after you're done and after we see how you've healed from that, then we can start talking about chemo. When she started the first um, cancer treatment, the chemo, you know, they said, we're just going to deal with this chemo. After six weeks, then we're going to talk to you about this other chemo. But first we have to get you through this chemo. So they wouldn't talk to her about what was coming because they really had to just see how her body reacted and responded to each thing that she was going through. It kind of went back to asking God for our daily bread. What do we need today? We don't need to know what's going to happen in a month or in two months or six months or, or ten months. We just need what we need for today. And I think this was one of the things that was really hard for us, those of us who are planners, when 2020 came along. Because all of a sudden, we couldn't plan. Things came to a halt. And plans kept changing. And, and what we could do kept changing. And maybe that was just God's way of teaching us to depend on him. Matthew 6.34 says, Do not worry about tomorrow. 
for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I need to hear that. I need to hear that, and I need to remember that God gives us daily, not monthly, not yearly, not a decade worth of bread. He asks us to get our manna each day. He'll give us the strength. He'll give us the patience. He'll give us the supplies, whatever we need for today. And tomorrow, he'll give us what we need for tomorrow. But this is the thing that's so profound about Jesus saying that. When he said, do not worry about tomorrow. Jesus knew the future. If I was Jesus in a crowd saying that, I'd be saying, you know, some of you don't need to worry about tomorrow. But then I'd look at the ones who who probably should be worrying about tomorrow because Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen to them tomorrow. And I'd be like, well, except for you, you should probably be worrying about tomorrow. But Jesus didn't say that. And he knew the future. As I've worked with the elderly, one of the things that has come up with those whose body has gone, but their mind is still there, there's one patient in particular that I walk with often. And she has told me many times, you know, it's good that we don't know what is to come. And that really took me off guard. Because I would think just the opposite. I'd sort of like to know what's going to come. And she says, no. It's a gift to not know. Because if she knew in three months she wouldn't be able to walk, well, that would make her sad today. But each time she's able to walk, she's grateful for the ability to walk today. And she's happy she doesn't know what three months will bring And that's made me look at life a little differently. Just enjoy today. Enjoy the blessings and the gifts that God has given you today, even if your plans aren't going well. Even if your New Year's resolutions are completely screwed up already. Just rest in where you are and the blessings of what's going on in the hand of God in the here and now. And may I suggest we all need to get back to what matters. We need to be asking ourselves, how is my spiritual health today? Am I spending time with God? Am I praying? Am I talking to God? You know, Jesus took time out of his day to go and talk to his heavenly father. And that just astounds me every time I'm reading the gospels and I see Jesus doing that. You would think that Jesus, being a very nature God, could skip over that part. But in his humanity, he didn't. He took time out to pray. We need to make our spiritual health a priority. How are your thoughts on money right now? Are your plans for this year all about making more money and making sure, sure that you have more today than you had last year? Where is giving in that? How are you going to guard your heart so that money isn't the only thing you're seeking? Are you loving people well? Does your spouse feel cherished? Do your children know that you love them? Are you listening? In your relationships, are you taking the time to listen to people? Or are you going about your business so quickly and blowing people off and brushing them aside And not listening. Friendship is listening. Friendship is loving. Relationships flourish when we put time into them. I think one of the things that I need to remember as we go through the next months of this year is Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It doesn't say trust in your plans with all your heart. If things are going well, trust the plan, trust the plan, trust the plan, keep going. It says trust in the Lord. You know why? Because plans change. That sometimes we can be so focused on the plan 
that we forget to focus on the planner. I don't want to do that. God, here are my plans. Do with them what you want. If I'm going in the wrong direction, yank me back. I need you. I, I, there's so much I don't know. So here, here's my heart. I want to walk with you. You lead the way. And I'll go where you want me to go. This has been Little Things. Because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Hey guys, I just want to take a minute to thank every single one of you who has taken the time to pray for the important work we're doing or made a donation or took the time to encourage any one of us at Time of Grace. I want you to know we appreciate you and we're thrilled to partner with you to bring the hope of the gospel to the world. 